Praise the Lord. Well, um, I was going to go to book of Nehemiah today. If I was sharing. So if you want to turn to the book of Nehemiah, we're going to look here. And I believe I've looked at to, to buy it before, but got a little bit more on him today. And so um, as we look in the book of Nehemiah, um, we're going to talk about, like I say, Tobiah. And um, well, we'll just get started here. Uh, Nehemiah chapter 1. We find that um, Nehemiah, okay, we find that he hears about what's going on. All right, in you know, with the captivity and all that stuff. But let's just read it. Let's just read it, okay? The words of Nehemiah, the son of Hakaliah. All right. And it came to pass in the month Chislu, in the 20th year, as I was in Shushan, the palace, that Haniah, one of my brethren, came he and certain men of Judah, and I asked them concerning the Jews that had escaped, which were left of the captivity, and concerning Jerusalem. And they said unto me, The remnant that are left of the captivity there in the province are in great affliction and reproach. The wall of Jerusalem also was broken down, and the gates thereof are burned with fire. So we find that they're in a, 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 in a hard place. <laughs> they've come out of captivity. They've, they've tried to return to Jerusalem, but they find that they're... You know that the walls are down, the gates are burned. They're they're having a hard time, and so it, it breaks his heart. He says, "And it came to pass when I heard these words that I sat down and wept and mourned certain days, and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven, and I said, Lord, I beseech thee, O Lord God of heaven, the great and terrible God that keepeth covenant and mercy for them that love him, and observe his commandments. Let thine ear now be attentive." So he begins to to see God and because he wants to do something his heart is to help his heart is to bless his heart is to make a way amen he wants to take care of the situation he wants the, the God to move on their behalf and do something but he says in verse uh, 8 well let's just go and read let the verse 6 let thine ear now be attentive unto thine eyes open that thou mayest hear the prayer of thy servant which I pray before thee now day and night for the children of Israel thy servants and confess the sins of the children of Israel, which have sinned against thee. Both I and my father's house have sinned. We've dealt very corruptly against thee, not kept the commandments, nor the statutes, nor the judgments, which thou commandest thy servant Moses. Remember, I beseech thee the word that thou commandest thy servant Moses, saying, All right, if you transgress, I will scatter you abroad among the nations. But if ye turn... If you repent, that's, that's a word we use, right? Unto me and keep my commandments and do them, though they were of you cast out in the uttermost part of the heaven, yet will I gather them from thence and will bring them into the place that I have chosen to set my name there. Now then, how do you know? He scattered them abroad because of their sin, because of their rebellion, because of these things that they didn't keep the commandments. They didn't keep the you know those these things that he told them the testimonies they didn't keep all these things they didn't keep the direction of god amen they went and done their own things and so they were scattered and how many know we we have a saying united we stand divided we fall so in in the division we find that there's weakness and there's there's a there's you know hurt and pain and separation and all these things going on that's why there's the the walls were torn down the gates were broken this, this type of you know showing us the, the 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 hurt the pain and all this all this thing you know but how many know he says if you're going to turn if you're going to repent if you come back to me keep my commandments do them he says i want to gather you go gather all these people and bring them back together and set my name there talk about a chosen generation right <laughs> but how many know keep his commandments what are his commands he tells us in one place his commandments are not grievous we could look at, you know, you look at the, he talks about Moses and the, we know the Ten Commandments, but we know that those Ten Commandments pointed us to Jesus Christ, didn't they? They showed don't do this, don't do this, don't do this, and all these things that we don't do. But when we get to the New Testament, we find out that Jesus updates that, doesn't he? And he tells us the commandments, to love thy neighbor, you know, first of all, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, thy mind, thy soul. Amen. But then love thy neighbor. So it's it's about 
bringing forth and in everything that we do we show love the love of god amen in everything that we say and we do it's it's out of the love of god that we demonstrate these things amen but i want to go on down um chapter two we find nehemiah is going to go into jerusalem um so we find that the king gives him letters of commencement and tells him okay go into the land you go to over there you're going to build the walls you're going to do what needs to be done in order to take care of your people to take care of this people all right um we find um Because we see in the verse 3, the king says, Let the king live forever. Why should not my countenance be sad when the city, the place of my father's sepulchers, lieth waste, and the gates are consumed? This is what Nehemiah is saying. So the king said, For what dost thou make request? So I prayed to the God of heaven. And that's when he begins to tell him, I'm going to give you letters. You go to the governors beyond the river that they may convey me over till I come into Judah. So we see they sent him with letters. And now then we're going to look on down here. So he says in verse 9, Then I came to the governors beyond the river and gave them the king's letters now the king had sent captains of the army and horsemen with me and when sandalat the horonite and tobiah the servant the ammonite heard of it it grieved them exceedingly that there would come a man to seek the welfare of the children of israel so we find here sandalat and tobiah were actually against building back Jerusalem amen building back the walls and putting back the gates and all these things now the interesting thing about Tobiah first of all he's an Ammonite <laughs> okay we're going to talk about what the Ammonite means about the name Tobiah means the goodness of Jehovah <clears throat> that sounds pretty good doesn't it <laughs> the goodness of Jehovah but we just read that we find he is actually not so good after all is he <laughs> he's against building back jerusalem he's against that how many know we got we we sometimes we get caught up in things that look good don't we and it looks good that's <laughs> where the children of israel kept getting themselves in trouble didn't they they kept doing what they thought was right in their own eyes but sometimes we get into things that look good and we think man this has got to be god this has got to be amen but sometimes it's not always. Amen. That's why we follow after the leading of the Spirit, right? So that we do. But we find here Tobiah. And he's an interesting character. We're going to read a little bit about him here. Um, but we find he's not really, you know, in the heart of God. <laughs> All right. We can read on down. <clears throat> he says, So I came to Jerusalem, was there three days. I rose in the night. And some, I and some men went with me. Neither told I any man what God put in my heart to do at Jerusalem. Neither was there any beast with me save the beast that I rode on. Now you find that he goes in. He looks everything over real good. But he's setting up a plan. And um, then I told them in verse 12. But when, uh, verse 18, no 17. Then he said unto them, You see the distress that we're in, how in Jerusalem lieth waste. And the gates thereof are burned with fire. Come and let us build up the wall of Jerusalem, that we be no more a reproach. I mean, no, building up the wall, he's speaking of girding up the loins of our mind. I mean, no, remember a wall, what does a wall do? It keeps out the bad things, doesn't it? But it keeps in the good. He says that we are sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, right? That we keep keeps in the good things, the godliness the holiness, the righteousness, and keeps out those things, amen, that would be opposite of God, that would distract us and, and get us off track, right? So he says, right, we're going to build up the wall, that we be no more a reproach or a shame or a laughing stock or whatever you want to put there. It's all, that's all included in it. And he says, then I told him of the hand of my God, which was good upon me, on also the king's words that he had spoken to me and they said let us rise up and build let us rise up and build so they strengthened their hands for this good work but when Sanballat the Hornite and Tobiah the servant the Ammonite and Geshem the Arabian heard it they laughed us to scorn all right what do we just find that we don't we're going to do this thing so we'll no longer be a reproach right and here it is 
They're trying to laugh him to scorn. They said, this is a thing that you do? Will you rebel against the king? Then answered them I, and I said unto them, The God of heaven, he will prosper us. Therefore we, his servants, will arise and build. We'll arise and build. That's what we're going to do. We're going to set our hands to the work, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to rise up, and we're going to build. We're going to build up, right? That would be my title today, Arise and Build. <laughs> but you have no portion of right nor memorial in Jerusalem. what he says to Sambalet, Tobiah, and Geshem. All right? We're going to arise. We're going to build. Okay? We, we know what arise means, right? To stand up. Right. Right? It's, it's to rise up. Okay? And you find that all through the Bible where he talks about arising up. Right? But to build... Um, it's to, to what we would think to build up, to repair, to, to strengthen, right? To make up a surety or assurance, right? So we see then verse chapter three, they begin to rebuild the wall and we find different ones working on different parts of the wall. But the thing I thought was interesting was when we got to verse seven and he says, next to them repaired Melatiah, the Gibeonite, Jaden, the Maranathite, the men of Gibeon, and Mizpah unto the throne of the governor on this side the river. On this side the river. Now then. How many know we used to sing a song in, in Haskell? There's a man standing on the river. And I think that might be in Revelation, book of Revelation. But he's proclaiming can if you want to, life unto both sides. Now what's he proclaiming to both sides? Life, right? That, that river, all right, is what separated, okay, or we can say in the type and shadow, those that are still alive or those that have passed on and died, right? But he's proclaiming life to both sides. But we find here they're building the wall on this side, Jordan, all right? On this side, they're building the wall, okay? In Judah, there it is. There's a man standing on the river. He's proclaiming life unto both sides. He's the connection. He's the one standing on the sea or the water, which we know is kindreds, nations, ten, you know, tongues, peoples. And we know that he's making that connection for both sides. He's the priest, all right, of Christ the Most High. Both banks of the river are rejoicing as they hear what? Their resurrection sound. Both sides are hearing that resurrection sound. Both sides are receiving their new body as heaven and earth meet together on higher ground amen Hallelujah. amen so he's showing us that we can rise and build right here on this side amen most churches are going to tell us we have to wait till we die and go to the other side we don't have to do that we can rise up right here and build the temple the house of god right here right we're going to arise and build because he's, he's showing us. The re he's letting us hear the resurrection sound. That's the sound we've been hearing, the resurrection sound. And we are receiving, amen, that new body. Amen. All right. So I want us to see that. It's on this side of the river. They're repairing. Amen. I wanted to point that out. Thank you, Pastor Judy. <laughs> uh, yes, absolutely. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So we go on to chapter 4. We find Nehemiah. We find that they're building. And, and the interesting thing is he spake before the brethren in verse 2 of the army of Samaria and said, what are these feeble Jews? Now this is what Tobiah, this is what Sambalat, or they're saying, what do, we, what do we do with these feeble Jews? They fortify themselves? Will they sacrifice? Will they make an end of the day? Will they revive the stones out of the heaps of the rubbish which are burned? Now, <laughs> the answer is yes. But we find Tobiah, the Ammonite, was by him. He said, even that which they build. This is what Tobiah says. If they build, a fox go up, he shall even break down their stone wall. Now, it's interesting as we read these things and find out these things about Tobiah, that when we go on back, I believe it's chapter 7, as we read on back, we find Tobiah has actually been set up inside the temple. We find it's a kind of like a Trojan horse effect. <laughs> but we scoot on back here. You can read about all the plots, um, different things. We find 
opposition in chapter 4 here or through ridicule they're trying to destroy their confidence uh you know how many know that's what the enemy tries to do doesn't it yes. <laughs> it tries to destroy our confidence in who we are in our god amen all right we could read on through the next chapter it's opposition through extortion we find opposition in chapter 6 through compromise they're trying to get the israelites to compromise and i've preached on this before but i wanted to show you to buy i, I want to get down here and i want to look in nehemiah chapter 7 let's look again at what tobiah is okay and who he is and the uh, what the ammonite means nehemiah chapter 7 we find in verse 62 uh, he's he's listing the returning exiles you could read all of this there's a lot of names there and Trying to pronounce them could be a challenge, but we find Tobiah listed in this returning exiles in verse 62. We find the children of Deliah, the children of Tobiah, the children of Nakoda, all right, 642. Read on down. And of the priests, the children of Habiah, the children of Cause, the children of Barzelia, which took of the daughters of Barzelia. But anyway, we find that the Gileadite was called out there. They sought their registers among those who were reckoned by genealogy. It was not found. Therefore, they were as polluted from the priesthood. So we find here pollution. They, they could not find pure lineage. Amen. We find that Tobiah here, and you, like I say, we've read here. We see the things that Tobiah represented. Yeah, goodness of Jehovah. We find that supposedly you're good, but you are not. But we find in, if we read on down, we find they read the law uh, here in verse, uh, chapter 8, begins to read the law. They begin to try to get everything set up right. They, they begin to, because they've got the wall up, they've got the gates up. We find that in those previous chapters there. They begin to, to read the law. They begin to see the Feast of Tabernacles. They begin to confess their sins, and you read all these things. The people make a pledge. But when we get on back here to chapter 13, they dedicate the wall. But the reforms of Nehemiah, we find that in verse chapter 13, it says, On that day they read in the book of Moses in the audits of the people, and therein was found written that the Ammonite and the Moabite should not come into the congregation of God forever. That's verse 1 of chapter 13. Sorry about that. Nehemiah 13 and 1. On the day they read in the book of Moses in the audience of the people, and therein was found written that the Ammonite and the Moabite should not come into the congregation of God forever. Now the uh, Ammonite represents a wild, uncultivated state of consciousness. Uh, there you go. <laughs> Inbred. That tells you a lot right there. But it's the, the it's these thoughts of sin and ignorance and uh, things formed by the outer world. It, it's a it's a it's a trust in the outer world. Okay, but it's uncultivated state of consciousness. It's wild. Uh, it's like almost like a wild ass because I didn't know Jesus why he had to ride that colt. Because he had to show dominion. No, because because it says it was a colt that was not had never been ridden before. And what happens usually when you ride one that hasn't been ridden before? <laughs> it's usually pretty wild, isn't it? Buck you off. They don't want to be ridden, right? They've never had that before. But Jesus sat on it and it didn't it just carried him right along, right? He was showing us how he overcame Amen. The world or this world right here, the man humanity. All right. But we find an Ammonite is one that's wild and it's an uncultivated state of consciousness all right it, it speaks of carelessness disorderly thinking uh, it weakens the position or the positive up building up power of the mind okay careless disorderly thinking and it weakens the positive up building power of the mind and it opens the way for error thoughts all right, so that is not supposed to be in the congregation of God, right? Gird you up the loins of your mind. I know I had the Lord show me once that, let me know, where do we be a disciple, right? 
a disciple, one that follows after, right? But if you take the word disciple and sh it, look at it real closely and then look, how many know he told me disciple equals discipline. You write them out. <laughs> They're the same basic word with a couple of extra letters there. Disciple equals discipline. It's this, you have to have discipline in order to be a disciple. And that discipline is to, you know, to do the things that he did, to follow after what he did. Amen? His mindset was, I only do what my father says. I only say what I hear my father say, right? So we have to have the discipline, and I'm talking to me, <laughs> to take the time to build up. Amen? Arise and build up. And how do we do that? By speaking the right things, doing the right things, right? They becoming that disciplined one, all right? Now, Moab's not supposed to come in either. What's Moab? Moab speaks of a carnal mind or a personal limited self. Living in that state of limitations or carnality. Because I mean, we're spirit. If we believe the word of God, if we believe he has reconciled us back to his one spirit, his life, amen, and made us one with him, then we're spirit. Right? And if we are spirit, then we have to know that spirit is not bound by time nor space. Spirit is limitless. Right? But we have a body, or this thing right here, we are spirit. That's who we truly are. We find places Philip was translated, wasn't he? Remember when he went to talk to the eunuch, and he baptized the eunuch, and he was translated almost immediately to another place, position? Spirit. We are spirit. Therefore, we are limitless. We're not bound by time nor space. All right? And actually, yes. <laughs> That's why I love the scripture that says, no, K-N-O-W, no, no man after the flesh. The genealogy doesn't matter. Because the only pure thing that we need is Jesus. Absolutely. That's what connects us all. That's what connects us all. Absolutely. Praise the Lord. Good, good, good. Amen. Isn't that good? That is good. Yes. So, the Ammonite and the Moabite, they are not supposed to come into the congregation of God forever. All right? Now, it came to pass when they had heard the law that they separated from Israel all the mixed multitude. And before this, Elijah the priest, having the oversight of the chamber of the house of our God, was allied or friend of Tobiah. Or even possibly related. Who knows? Because of the mixture. <laughs> and he had prepared for him a great chamber where aforetime they laid the meat offerings, the frankincense, the vessels and the ties of the corn, the new wine and the oil, which was commanded to be given to the Levites and to the singers and the porters and the offerings of the priests. But in all this time was not I at Jerusalem. For in the two and thirty years, thirtieth year of Artaxerxes, king of Babylon, came I unto the king, and after certain days obtained I leave of the king. And I came to Jerusalem and understood of the evil that Elisha did for Tobiah in preparing him a chamber in the courts of the house of God. And it grieved me sore. Therefore I cast forth all the household stuff of Tobiah out of the chamber. And I commanded, and they cleansed the chambers, and thither brought I again the vessels of the house of God with the meat offering and the frankincense. All right? And he says, and I perceive that the portions of the Levites had not been given them. I mean, you know, we seek to buy in the chambers. Amen. But we're not to have a to buy in our house. Amen. That to buy it not only says, like I say, it's, it's uncultivated. It's wild. Rebellious. Um, it, could, it can speak of... Um, different things you know it could speak of uh, complacent even a complacency how many know a complacency to just allow things because hey it looks good why it looks really good 
you know, maybe these things in my life look really good, but are they really of God? Should I cast them out? These thoughts, sometimes we have good intentions, but they're not always godliness, right? Good intentions look good. We've got to cleanse out the temple and allow God to be God. Amen? So we've got to arise. And how do we arise? By we getting rid of all the junk, right? We get rid of all the clutter, all the things that are not like unto him. We've got to examine ourselves. Amen? Talking to me too. We've got to examine ourselves and get rid of all the junk, those things that look good but might not necessarily, probably are not God. <laughs> cast that out and get rid of that, all those things that are not like him so that we can build the house amen because this is the house of god the temple of god and it is supposed it is holy he says it's holy he says it's righteous amen he said it is complete in him i mean no but it's not supposed to have an unholiness uncleanness in it because he made us clean didn't he he made us holy made us righteous all right so we see these things we see we could compare it to when they went into the land back in the book of joshua i mean they it god told them what three or four times he said be strong and of good courage be strong and of good courage go in and take the land they they went in and man they went in with a fervent well that first they they were taking the land you know and they were getting rid of the enemies but then after a while it just kind of slowed down didn't it you know joshua got older and you know the people got older and things you know it just got what i'm trying to say is after a while they just got complacent and they allowed the enemies to live amongst them to be there amen you see a tobiah there because as long as they're alive and living amongst them, there's influence there. Right? <laughs> there's an influence that should not be there. And so we find, and I believe it's about the 13th chapter of Joshua, that he says there's unconquered, a lot of unconquered territory still here because there's still enemy in the land. But we find before Joshua died, he gave them commandment to continue the fight continue to get rid of the enemies continue to do this even though i'm old and i'm passing on you continue to do these things but we find that they never did really get rid of the enemy they never did really get rid of all the giants they never got rid of all the, all the things that stood in the way amen so we find that's why there's still were giants when jesus came right <laughs> that's why he had to overcome right but we find that he did overcome them. He had overcome every giant, every sickness, every disease, every pain, every problem. He overcame them all. He walked through the land. That's why he went through the land. Amen. He cleaned it out, cleared it out. And now he says, just like he told them back then, it's available to you today. To go in and possess the land. What do we got to do? We got to go in and seek out those things that are not like god even though they might look good are they really good <laughs> so we got to buy it we got to get we, we arise like i said we arise and build when we get rid of to buy it. we got we can't arise up we can't come into brian always is up this way we can't come into the new day with the old junk right <laughs> we are new creatures in christ jesus he has taken possession of the land he has destroyed every enemy even the last enemy which is death and he has says okay it's yours to have now don't be complacent don't be weary he says it this way don't be weary in well doing continue on amen i don't know maybe it's just a uh, encouraging message today to just keep on maybe you know tell them you know i don't know what we're all going through Sometimes it gets hard. Sometimes it's like nothing, you don't see anything happening. But just, just keep on going. Keep on doing. Keep on keeping on, right? That's what we would say. <laughs> and just keep working at it. Because how many know, he tells us in the book of Revelation, so many good things to him that overcome it. Whew, overcome what? The Tobias that we've left in our land. Amen? Whew, to him that overcometh. And we could read all those things. Um, I won't go there. You can read them. 
first few three or four chapters of Revelation there to him that overcometh. I'm going to give a white robe ministry, a uh, new stone, white stone. You know, I'm going to uh, allow him to sit in my throne even as I'm sitting in the Father's throne. You know, we, you all these wonderful, beautiful things. It even goes on uh, later on in Revelations, and I forget what chapter 16, 17, along in there somewhere. He says, to him that overcome, well, I give all things. <laughs> what a tremendous promise, right? What a tremendous promise. He tells us in Romans chapter 8, he says, you know what? The sufferings of this world, or the, the trials, tribulations, all these things that we go through, are not worthy to be compared to the glory, right? To the glory. So it's, it's worth keeping on. It's worth searching out. It's worth doing the things we need to do to keep on. Yes. Yes. Amen? When I love Nehemiah. But, you know, it's, it's a natural representation of what God is doing spiritually in his people. That's why I love it so much. Maybe people, when they read that, they don't see that, but that's exactly what he's doing because he has examples for everything that he does, whether you see it or not. So, Isaiah 58, okay, verse 11 says, and the Lord shall guide thee continually, forever, and satisfy thy soul in drought, hard times, and make fat thy bones, and thou shalt be like a water garden, and like a spring of water, whose waters fail not. So even if we're going through a hard time, and somebody comes to us for help, the help is there, because it's in our well, it's in the spirit, the flow of the spirit, it's there. But here's the next verse that I compare with Nehemiah. And they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places. Thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations, and thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of paths to dwell in. Absolutely. Ooh, that's fantastic. Isn't that beautiful? I love it. Oh, thank you. That's great. I love that. Repairs of the breach. Amen. And like you say, it's in us. It's in us. That's why he tells us. He says, draw waters out of the well of your salvation. Draw waters out of the wells of salvation. It's within you. It's within you. We've got to dig, dig, reach down there. And we just have to, like I say, we just have to continue to look and examine our lives. And with the help of the Lord, he does show us those areas. <laughs> Sometimes they're painful when we find them. But amen. We've got to get rid of to buy out of the tabernacle if we want to arise amen and build build this house build this tabernacle because we cannot manifest him the christ in this earth amen as long as we're full of that junk right it, i mean we can look at all the examples and i you know was thinking of um different ones and when they were at the gate beautiful uh the temple and the man was there, and he was lame, and he couldn't walk. And they, he said, you know, they looked at, uh, was Paul, and I forget who it was, but Peter and James, it was Peter and James, I believe. And, you know, he was expecting some kind of an offering to help him, you know, because he sat there, and every day he sits there and begs alms, you know, and wants help, you know, because he can't walk. He's lame. And, and Peter looks at him, and he says, well, you know, I have something to give you. It's not money. I don't have any money to give you. But such as I have, I'm going to give you, rise up and walk, you know, and takes him by the hand, pulls him right up, rise up, rise up. Now, and we talked here the other day about um, at the pool of Bethesda, the man that had been there 38 years, and he was, you know, he wasn't able to, to get up and do anything. He was lame. He was sick. And he says, you know, and Jesus asked him, he says, you know, you want to be healed. And Jesus said, I mean, he said, well, you know, I don't have anybody to put me in when there's a stirring of the water. And, you know, he had this, all these excuses, right? I can't, you know. And how many know we have things in our lives that sometimes we, you know, we think we can't. <laughs> but Jesus said, you know, hey, pick up your rise, rise, take up your bed and walk. And, I mean, no, it took faith in the word that he heard, right? He didn't just lay there. He had to do something to get up and walk, right, and to pick up that bed and go. So all these things, you know, rise up. Right, what did he tell Lazarus? You rise up. Rise up out of that grave. He called him forth right out of that grave. He said, pull those clothes off of him, those, those, those clothes of death. Get them off of him, you know. 
So rise up. Rise up and build. We have to do something. We can't sit around and wait for things to happen. He's calling a people to rise up. And we rise up. It's, it's almost like um, something's been in the water and it's bogged down with too much water. It won't go up. But I mean, you get a little bit of release and you get that out and you, it rises up, right? <laughs> you get, uh, get, rid of, get rid of the junk so we can rise up. Amen. And that we can build this house of God. Amen. Build this temple. But I want us to see Tobiah, and I don't want us to be complacent. I don't want us to sit around and do nothing, but I want us to rise up. I want us to achieve, because he paid such a high price. When you really sit down and think of what he did, when you think of uh, the beatings, the, you know, the, the, the whipping on his back, and, and the... And you think about being hung on a cross and you think about the shame that he endured and you think about all the sicknesses he took i mean when you really think about that i mean we 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 get wore down with one sickness two sicknesses but i mean you you think about taking every single sickness that was ever 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 could ever happen to mankind any kind of imaginable or unimaginable thing that could happen he took it all uh, can you imagine the suffering can you imagine these things he paid that high a price and gave his life the ultimate price so that we could achieve the oneness, the unity, that goal of being as he is in this world just because he's so loved. Amen? It's, it just boggles my mind, the things that he did. Because and so besides loved. the physical mm -hmm. that you're talking about, mm -hmm. um, it, it, God just dropped this into my heart just now. Yes. Um, his integrity was strongly attacked. I don't know mm -hmm. uh, if everybody's had their integrity, integrity attacked, but there's been times in my life when my integrity was attacked. And mm -hmm. that almost hurt that worse hurt. than the <laughs> physical pain could have hurt mm -hmm. to think when I had in my heart the desire to do that which was right and have it questioned yeah. and have it attacked and help and be accused of doing that which is wrong mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um jesus was the utmost mm -hmm. in high integrity mm -hmm. and it was severely attacked yes absolutely during that time period yeah i love it a tremendous i had never thought about it that direction but that's perfect i love that that's fantastic that is fantastic See, that even adds a new dimension to that another dimension that you know i hadn't even thought about but that's oh. so many good things i agree so many good things it just can't it goes on and on <laughs> got issues that's right oh god is so good He's so good. That's right. He's so good. Exactly. God is so good. Amen. He is so good to us. And we just, he just give it to us. He just gives us everything. He just gives it to us and says, here, it's available to you right here, right now, all of this stuff that I've provided for you. It's yours to have. It's more than amazing than amazing. It's just mind-boggling to think that everything He's made available to us. Everything that he owns, everything. He, uh, he says we're heirs and joint heirs with Christ. And he obtained all things. The Father gave him all things, right? And then he turns around and gives it and makes it available to you and I. Because he so loves us. What a great love. Amen. What a great love. It's all just to reconcile us back to himself and to manifest his life. It's just, it's mind-boggling. It's, it's just amazing to me. So, I just want us <clears throat> to just keep on keeping on. Amen. Wanted to sh I wanted to share that. That was uh, in my heart, and that's what I wanted to share with everybody. That it, it's just, it's available to us, and we can do. We can do it. We can do it. We can achieve what he has given us the ability and the right. Remember, he's given us the ability and the right. Amen. He's justified us. Um, back over in the book of Romans, I believe it's about chapter 5, 6, where he says he gave us a free gift, remember? It was the gift of righteousness. He justified us and made it. And that justification means that he gave us the right to live. Legally, we have the right to live because of what he did. 
and he gave us the ability to live. That's what justification means. Justification unto life is what he said. Justification unto life. In other words, we have the legal right to stand up and live, and we have the ability. He gave us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. It's all available to us right now. We can't be complacent. We can't be rebellious. We can't be <laughs> in that place of, well, I think this is right. No, we got to seek him and let him show us what is right. Amen. We got to be yielding to him. Amen. Following the spirit. Amen. God is good. I mean, he, oh, <laughs> Oh, no, Paul. Yes, yes. Exactly, exactly. That wouldn't be very nice, would it? <laughs> uh, but anyway, that's what I want to share with you guys today. And God is good. And I love you guys. <laughs> God bless. <laughs> Praise the Lord. God is good all the time. <laughs>